Hey guys, welcome back to How to Produce Electronic Music in 2019 Without Tearing Your Hair Out. I'm Jordan, your new electronic music producer friend and instructor. So obviously, drums, percussion, rhythm, tempo is all incredibly important to music. In fact, the drums and the bass are pretty much the cornerstone of every single modern song in existence, excluding, of course, avant-garde, and ambient, and some other fringe genres that don't use percussion or bass. Hey baby, wake up from your sleep. We have arrived onto the future and the whole world is become... Electronic. Uh, for the most part, those are almost the most important foundations of each track. So what are the methods of creating a drum loop, you ask? There's really four stages of creating a drum loop, which will become the foundation, the tempo, the rhythm of your entire track. So what are those four stages? We've got sourcing. That's where we're looking for samples, we're looking for loops, or we're creating new synthesized drum sounds to use for the purpose of creating our own drum kit. Step two in creating a drum loop is sequencing, which can be done with either MIDI triggering, manual arrangement, or splicing an existing drum loop. I'll explain what all this is as we go along. Then the third phase in creating a drum loop is editing. That's where we use envelopes and our knowledge of ADSR and effects like uh, reverb, saturation, limiting, compression, things like that to change the tonality and give more body to our drums after we have composed the rhythms for them. And then the final step, step four, is mixing. Not to be confused with editing because mixing is where we're gonna go in and we're gonna adjust all of the volumes, panning, stereo separation, EQing, and etc. so that those drums sit perfectly in the mix. One of the easiest and most popular methods of creating a drum loop is with samples. And these can be easily obtained right here by going to the free tools section of the classroom and just downloading some sample packs from the different websites that I've provided for you. Those are all free, they're royalty free and usable in any commercial or non-commercial project, but if you have any questions just check the terms of service for each website so you don't have any questions about copyright or anything like that. The second and probably more popular way of creating a drum loop is by downloading an existing drum loop and splicing it. Splicing a drum loop is cutting it up into its component parts and using each individual drum hit or one shot to create a brand new loop or to just slice up and juxtapose different elements of that original loop. Now, I don't recommend using loops as a starting point for every track because it's kind of the easy way out and it doesn't teach you very much when you're first learning. Um, it also can limit you to the existing samples if you're not careful. You might build the whole song around that drum loop only to find out, you know, a thousand other artists have used that drum loop in their, their tracks too. So if you want to have an original sound, uh, you can accomplish this by splicing drum loops, and I use that method all the time. However, I suggest to use one-shots and samples of individual drum sounds to kind of create a layering effect that makes your drums stand out from just the standard loops. The third method of sourcing sounds for your drum loops is with hardware drum machines, which are a very unique and popular method of getting drums into a track, but perhaps not the only method you'd want to use. In my opinion, using hardware drum machines is often best accomplished in accompaniment with samples, so I would layer the analog warm, rich, powerful analog sounds of the drum machines and mix them with samples. Now, this, this whole concept of analog versus digital, what does all that mean? Because I haven't really covered that in any of the other lessons yet. If you've been following it just step by step, um, from melody on to movement, 
Um, you're probably wondering, well, you know, what is analog? Why would I even want an analog drum machine? Or what, what is an analog synthesizer compared to a digital synthesizer? Well, the easiest way to sum it up without getting, you know, bogged down in a bunch of high level music production terminology and uh, mathematics and science, to be honest, is to just say that analog sounds are more pure, they have more clarity, and they just cut right through the mix of a song and provide a really powerful sound that just can't really be matched with the digital equivalent. However, they have their own limitations. With digital technology, you can come up with much more unique sounds, unless you're getting modular crazy, but well, that's for another time. Another way of looking at it that makes it a little bit more simple is to imagine digital sound as kind of a series of stair steps that are shaped like a curve, right? And analog, we have this perfect round curve, just like you might find in nature. In the digital world, you can never ever create that curve. All you can do is make stair steps that kind of represent a curve, but aren't really a perfect curve. And the higher we go up in bit rate and sample rate and things like that, the more of those stair steps you get in that curve until it starts to look to your eye and you know sounds to your ear as if it were an analog signal. But at the end of the day, analog is perfectly round and pure in its signal and digital representations of that are nothing more than stair steps and they can be very convincing and they can sound fantastic and you're going to need them but they can never give you the warmth the clarity and the purity of tone that an analog machine can and that's why you already know what 808 is 808 kick drum 808 hat 808 snare drum 808 clap got an 808 this and an 808 you've probably heard this many times before you probably think about hip-hop or heavy bass tracks when you hear it well do you know where 808 comes from 808 was invented by a company called Roland which you may have heard of already and it's from the TR-808 it was one of the world's first accessibly priced and affordable drum machines pure analog drum machines and it was popularized by artists like Marvin Gaye and his track Sexual Healing so not quite the heavy super low grungy bass you might be thinking of uh, but because of artists like that and the accessibility of this hardware we started to hear these sounds pop up in a lot more music especially genres like hip-hop and to this day, 808 drum samples are a core staple to a lot of electronic music and you will sp still probably be using them in your productions with uh, some editing done to them. So now you know the different sources that you can use to create the sounds that will be the foundation of your own percussion and drum loops. So let's go on to how you're going to sequence them. There are a few different ways for you to arrange drum samples so that they make a nice rhythm or groove for your track. And those methods are, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna put them up on the screen now, we have MIDI triggering, which is where we're going to use musical notes on a keyboard, and instead of playing that note on an instrument, we're going to play a drum sample that is basically set up to be triggered whenever that MIDI note is hit. Then we have manual arrangement, which you must remember this, is the most powerful, full-featured way of creating and editing drum loops and in the end all of the other methods are inferior to this however the downside of manual arrangement of course is that it's very tedious it could take a very long time just to get a tiny little loop done so you're definitely going to want to save all of your progress and create your own presets and if you're using Ableton you can do this by creating ALC files which will go 
we'll talk more about as we progress. The third stage of creating a drum loop is where we edit with ADSR envelopes and effects, and these effects can be located on hardware drum machines. So analog drum machines sometimes have effects built in. We have samplers that are built into programs like Ableton, Cubase, all of the DAWs pretty much have a sampler that's built in, and then there's tons and tons of samplers that you can uh, download or purchase that maybe even come with hardware like Native Instruments Machine um, or Native Instruments Software Equivalent Battery. And there's just tons of samplers out there and all they do essentially is help you to arrange your drum samples in unique ways so that you can create loops faster than by dragging and dropping every single sample with your mouse. And then the final stage of creating a drum loop, stage number four, that's where we go in and we do the mixing. Not much to say about that yet. You're going to see this hands-on as we progress, uh, but for now, in this video, we're going to be covering mainly the different methods so you can kind of get a feel for what you think you would enjoy most. Because at the end of the day, it's all about creating a workflow that works for you, that is easy for you to understand and easy for you to use. All right, let's get the basics out of the way so that we can get hands on and just dive right into making our first loops. Mm. 